Greetings everyone, and welcome to Back to Ashes. For those of you who don't know the man behind the mic, hi, I'm Phoenix. Nice to meet you. I normally only um, do face reveals in my lives, but because of the recent activity with YouTube, I will now be opening all of my videos just like this, and I will be ending my videos just like this. For the bulk of the story, there will be no more black screen, but there will be a very, very dim something in the background. That way, my videos do not get flagged as reused of content or I get blamed for using an AI voice. So thank you so much for understanding. If you are new here and would like to support the channel, please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and comment. It really does help the channel out. With all of that being said, it is time to go back to ashes. For once we arise from the ashes, we are a bigger, brighter, stronger, and a happier person in the morning. Sit back, relax, kick back, grab a snack, or tuck in to get warm, and prepare for your dose of vocal melatonin entitled True Backwoods Creepy Stories. Right after this intro, there will be an ad. I'll read the first story, there will be an ad. And after that, there will be no more ads within this video. So, I was talking with my stepmom about late night driving experiences. And she told me about an encounter she had in Leroy, Montana on a road trip from Washington to North Dakota. She was on Route 87 and she was running low on gas. The Ford Benton exit had a lot of construction going on and she couldn't see any way to get to the gas stations from the exit ramp. So, she got back on the highway. After a while, she saw an exit sign for Leroy, Montana, and it said there was gas and food available. She took the exit and saw another sign reading, Leroy, five miles. At this point, they had no service and were relying solely on an atlas. The road took them through a dark wooded forest, and after a while, my stepmom realized the odometer had gone up 15 miles, and they still hadn't found any sign of a town. But she kept driving and waited for a friend, who was holding the atlas, to say something. After a few more minutes, her friend spoke up and said she thinks they passed Leroy somehow, and my stepmom agreed. They found a fat shoulder to turn around, and as they were pulling off to make their turnaround, they both had an image flash into their heads. A man standing in the middle of the road. Neither of them actually saw him in real life, but both could describe the man in exact detail. He was tall with a brown flannel and what looked to be a scythe broken in half with the handle wrapped in a white, bloody cloth. He also had a thick scar across his forearm. While that by itself is weird enough that my stepmom planned never to go anywhere near that place again. For the next eight months, she received frequent phone calls from Leroy, Montana. After my own research, I've come to find out that Leroy is a ghost town, unmarked on Google Maps, unless you specifically search it up. Me and some friends have already planned to go to Leroy over spring break this year and see if we can't find anything. I'm going to go ahead and leave this here to see if anybody else might have seen or heard of anything similar in the area or any insight as to what might have happened. It was about 2010 or so. A buddy and I headed out trout spearing. We we're tribal. On a small creek that flows into Lake Superior. A few key points. It has a few slight turns, but it's fairly straight and rocky, as the land drops pretty good down into the lake. This is at 2 to 3 a.m. on a cold, wet spring night. This is heavily wooded, thinly populated BFE. Ain't no one around. Nearest house is maybe one and a half miles away. Two things happen at night. 
that, to this day, we still can't explain. Number one. We were working our way downstream using headlamps to spot trout. We noticed a red light in the distance that didn't belong there. Like if you were seeing the aviation light on top of a radio tower. We fish on and we noticed the light is still with us. I remember thinking, huh, it's just a cigarette. And someone is just being an ass creeping up on us. I bust up the bank and the light now appears miles away. This happens a few more times. It looks as if like it's right there. Then as you move to it, it appears far away. Again, this is happening out in the sticks. There are no towers or anything topped with the light, no houses and no close roads. We were a little curious, stumped, but fished on. And then it goes south. Number two. We are on the east bank, headed north, being downriver. We are hoofing it because we have our limit and the red light is creepy. We climb up the bank to get around a windfall and the remnants of a huge, long-gone beaver dam. I'd say we were up on the bank and moving downriver for maybe 60 yards. We scramble back down to the water's edge, and the fucking river is flowing the other way. This is a fairly straight river. No oxbows. We've fished it. We know it. The world is freaking upside down. We are not turned around on a bend. Add this to the red light, and we sort of looked at each other, and my buddy nodded his head west, which shot to be straight across the river because to the right, or north, is Lake Superior, downriver, and left is south to the beaver ponds, but the river has flipped. So, west? Anyway, Buddy nods west and says, let's go. We beelined to the nearest road, which was right where it was supposed to be, dead west, and hoofed it back to the truck. I spent a lot of time on what passed for Google Earth, then trying to figure out what light we saw and how we got upside down on the river. It's just not possible. The river cannot sesh uphill that far inland and up that gradient. Just baffling, and I think about it all the time. What do you think caused the river to flip upside down? I went camping with my wife and stepdaughter the other night near Laguna Mountain in California. We were off the main road in a secluded route that seldom had cars passing by. No foot traffic through the area at all, whatsoever. We heard a noise late during the night that honestly could be explained logically by something natural we don't know about. However, my wife and I have both been losing sanity trying to understand what that noise could have been or what could have made that noise. The first occurrence of the noise occurred around midnight and we can only describe it as a slow, deliberate, rhythmic, nail-scratching on the tensioned paracord strips that were securing the tent to the ground. Naturally, we thought it might have been a critter curious about the tent, but the slowness and rhythm of the noise makes us believe otherwise, because critters like that generally scratch quickly and sound more hasty. The other conclusion that leads us to believe it wasn't a critter was because of the fact that throughout the night, we actually did hear squirrels running around outside, curious of all of our stuff that was outside, naturally. Why is that detail important? Because during the time leading up to the noise and the time after the noise, we heard absolutely no critters outside running up to or away from the tent. Whatever was creating the noise was absolutely silent coming up to and away from the tent, or eerily enough, 
may have been floating or something of the nature. We did hear it again at around 2 a.m. the same night, and during that specific episode, the noise seemed to have shifted from one corner of the tent to the other, closer to our heads, allowing us to even feel the vibration of the scratching reverberating throughout the floor of the tent. That's what leads me to believe it was the taut paracord strips because of the tension allowing the vibration to be stronger. We may have heard the noise again a third time, but it seemed so weak and went on for such a small duration compared to the other times that we honestly couldn't really key in on the noise that time. So, we aren't sure if that was completely the same thing or just our sanity playing tricks on us. My wife and I were very disturbed when we heard that, and it honestly kept us awake and on high alert for a while. We are very curious to know what it may have been. Has anyone had a similar experience like this? I wanted to share what happened to me and my partner in September of 2003. We were hanging out with our two new friends, husband and wife. Let's say their names are John and Mary. They decided to camp at Todd Lake Recreation Center, which is in George Washington National Forest, and invited us to spend time at their campsite, have a few beers, relax by the campfire, etc. My partner and I decided we weren't up for overnight camping, but we're down to hang out for a little bit. The recreation center was only 45 minutes from home, so we thought we could drive if we didn't have but a few drinks, ate some food, and chilled out for a couple of hours. So we get there at around 4.30 p.m. and have camp snacks, which consist of sandwiches, chips, nothing special, and some alcoholic seltzers. We wander down to the lake and let our dog swim, and then we decided to head back to the campsite and start a fire. We knew we weren't staying the night, so I kept track of how many drinks I had and the food I ate to ensure I was suitable for the drive later. In total, I had five seltzers the entire night, which was an hour's. Not to sound like an alcoholic or anything, but five seltzers do not explain what happened to us that night. I can handle my alcohol and am responsible while drinking by pacing myself, eating food and drinking water in between each beverage. So we are hanging out by the fire with John and Mary. The next thing you know, John says, Hey, do you guys want to walk down to the lake? And we respond with, Yeah, sure, let's do it. The campfire has a short walking path to the lake, probably a half of a mile away. It should only take a few minutes to get there. Now, this is when it gets weird. I looked at my cell phone and see it's 8.30 p.m. and decide to put my phone in the car before we walk down to the lake because I don't want to lose it. The next thing I knew, I wake up in the woods, passed out on the ground on a trail with my partner in the middle of George Washington National Forest, an hour away from our campsite and John and Mary were nowhere to be found. My partner was on his back with his head turned to the side, and I was lying halfway on the moss and the other half of him with my head turned to the side, almost as if we were placed perfectly. We were lost and both felt extremely confused and sick. We both started throwing up and had to take breaks walking out to try and find John and Mary's campsite. It took us an hour to get back, and it appeared we had hiked an hour outside of the recreation area. We both had zero recollection of how we got there, why we were both passed out in the middle of the woods at night, and why the hell five seltzers with food over a multiple hour span made either one of us be so sick and lose memory at the same time. My partner was completely disoriented and started screaming for help. I was begging him to be quiet because I felt so sick and had no idea where we were. 
I needed a moment to collect myself and get my bearings to try and hike out of our current situation. Something to know about us is we are both avid hikers and backpackers and are very comfortable outdoors in nature, even alone. However, at that moment, I was so thankful I didn't wake up in the woods at night on a trail alone. Thankfully, he was with me. The entire time, we both felt like we were being watched as we tried to find our way back. It was unsettling. I was telling my partner when we were trying to find our way back to the campsite, something felt very wrong. And when we got back, we needed to get in the car and leave. I felt it in my bones, but I couldn't pinpoint exactly what happened. We were both utterly shocked that we somehow both conveniently blacked out simultaneously. I know what you are all thinking. Were we drugged? We felt that too. But why would John and Mary, our supposed friends, drug us? And why would they drug us and carry us deep into the forest? It didn't add up. We finally make it back to the campsite, and I first open my car and grab my phone to see what time it is. It was 2.30 a.m. My heart sank. How did this happen? How did it go from 8.30 p.m. when we were walking down to the lake, which was only half a mile or less from the campsite, to 2.30 in the morning? Neither of us liked not knowing what happened to us in that lost time. So, before we decided to leave, my partner knocked on her tent and said, Hey, John, we are leaving. What happened, man? We need to get out of here. Something's off. John then replies, Where is Mary? And my partner and I look at each other, concerned, and say to John, What do you mean? She's not in the tent with you? And John replies, No, I thought she was with you too. That's when we all decided to search for Mary. John said the last thing he remembered was we were hanging out by the fire and asked if we wanted to go down to the lake. And then hours later, he woke up underneath the picnic table at the campsite, not remembering how he got there. However, something seemed fishy and he was far too relaxed. We found Mary down the trail to the lake, slumped over asleep in the woods near the campsite. Neither remembered what happened and why we all ended up in those weird places. No one can remember what happened for those few hours. It was misty, dark, and foggy on the mountain, and I was shivering, teeth clattering, feeling sick and just ready to go home. We got in the car and returned to our house, but it took a while to settle enough to sleep. When we spoke to John the next morning, they laughed it off and said, <laughs> maybe we <laughs> shouldn't drink so much next time when we hang out. I remember all of us hanging by the fire, then mentioning us all going down to the lake, but I stayed back to deal with the dog, and you three went down there. John changed his story from what he said the night before. Something just did not sit right with me. The Todd Lake Recreation Center was almost empty. We only saw one other family camping that night, and they weren't anywhere near our campsite, which was also odd. My partner and I didn't feel we drank enough to that point it would cause us to black out, especially at the same time. So what really happened? We were sore and a little cut up, but our only thoughts were this must have been something paranormal, or they did, in fact, drug us. I started to get flashbacks of memory, and all I remember was John's face on the beach, then black. Did aliens abduct us? Was it something from Appalachian folklore, like Mothman or some other bizarre creature? Did we all drink too much? Did we get drugged? My partner lost his phone that night, so I called the ranger the following Monday, and they said they found it in the woods, busted up between campsites 5 and 6. But John and Mary were camping at campsite 1. 
The ranger mailed it back to us because I didn't want to drive back there. I had a horrible pit in my stomach. The phone never cut back on. Even though the front of the screen was perfectly intact, it was only the back of the phone that was busted up. A part of me doesn't want to know what's on that iPhone. The next day, my partner was violently ill, and I was shivering with teeth clattering and chill bumps all day. We honestly probably should have gone to the hospital. In my 30 years, I've never experienced anything like this. And to this day, we were skeptical about meeting new friends or having new people enter our lives. Either way, we were both so grateful we made it home safely that night. And we have each other. What do you all think? My partner doesn't have social media, but I blocked John and Mary on mine, and we haven't seen them since. We moved to another state in 2024. Not because of that reason. But I've dealt with a lot of PTSD and night terrors since this occurred. I now worry if it was John or both of them. Are they doing this to other people? Thank you for listening to my story. Hello everyone, I live in rural southwest Virginia in Appalachia and heard odd whistling in the woods a few days ago at night. It started when I was playing airsoft alone in the woods at about 7 p.m. In almost pitch black, I live a lonely existence and was walking around the woods behind my house. I go to a clearing just on top of a hill and sat down to take a rest. Just when I sat down, I heard some odd whistling. It was perfect whistling and whistled a tune I had never heard before. It was clear and it sounded like it was close, maybe within 150 feet or less, and came directly from behind me. It would have had to have been in the woods and near the property line with one of our neighbors. It instantly gave me chills down my back and I got the feeling of being watched. I, not being an idiot and having a brain, wasted no time in sprinting full speed down towards my house, hopping over rocks and limbs. The whistling stopped shortly after I got moving, but I still felt like I was being watched and like something was off. I didn't see anything when I did turn back to look while opening a gate, that is but that may be because of the darkness and the distance I had moved. I don't think it was a bird, as the leaves on the trees haven't regrown yet, and it still stays cold at night and sometimes during the day, but I don't know much about birds. There were also no birds to be seen and everything else was quiet. I also doubt it was a person, as I heard no talking, no leaves crunching, no talking, and no other noises. I should also mention the whistling started out of nowhere and did not gradually get louder as if someone or something was moving closer while whistling. I should also mention that I've been in these woods a decent amount of my life and I have never heard anything like it before, not even once. I was a bit tired, but I've been more tired before while being up in those woods at similar times before, and I'm not one to hallucinate. The situation still gives me chills when I think about it. I've had the feeling of being watched before in those woods, but those feelings have never been so intense and extreme as that one night. I was hoping if anyone could know what it was, Would you share it with me? Was it an animal? Maybe, but we, meaning me and my family, have dogs around the house, and most wild animals stay away, and I haven't really seen anything outside of a bear or two, and deer in those woods. I should also mention that dogs occasionally bark randomly into the woods, but they weren't really barking at the moment, when the whistling happened, mind you. I was hoping 
anyone could identify what it was. Maybe, if there is even enough information here. And I'm not saying it was paranormal, but I'm not saying it was just a wild animal, either. Also, apologies for shoving too much information in such a short story. I just want to make sure all the details are included. So, please, tell me, what are your thoughts? I've looked around and read a lot of stories similar to mine, but I think it's the perfect time to share my experience I had nine to ten years ago. The reason I'm sharing this is, A, because that's the point of this whole thing, and I've enjoyed reading others' experience, but B, to see if anyone has a similar experience or an idea of what this could have been, because I never have. Before I start, I've told this story to lots of people over the years. Friends, family, even acquaintances, whenever supernatural or scary stuff has come up in conversation. But I've always left out the finer details on purpose because honestly, I think I have some latent trauma from it. I don't like going into detail about it or reliving this experience. Instead, I have only ever recounted this as a 60-second scary story to elicit a reaction, probably as a coping mechanism. My girlfriend is the only person I have ever told the full story. To be clear here, I am not trying to convince anyone of anything here. You can believe what you want, and I respect your opinion but I'm also not going to debate or argue over something I know to be true. This experience happened when I was wild camping on my own in a forest in Wales. I live in England, near the Welsh border. This is something I've done dozens of times and continue to do to this day. I think it was April or May of 2013 or 14. Weather was unseasonably good, and this was the second or third night that I'd planned for my trip, although it ended up being the last. First night and second day had been great. Got a lovely long hike in, followed by a pub lunch. I had driven back to the area where I was staying, and I was now back at my tent. I settled down for the night, read a book, and had some beers and went to sleep. It was probably between 11 p.m. and midnight. I was just in that state where you're semi-conscious, about to drift off, but haven't quite just yet. I slowly became aware of a melodic noise somewhere outside the tent. It didn't sound that close, but maybe within like 50 feet. It sounded like a person perfectly humming a tune. After listening for a couple of minutes, I was definitely persuaded somebody was humming a tune. When I say perfectly, I mean just that. It sounded like a professional singer or something because it was perfectly in tune. No voice breaks or falters at all. I can't remember whether it sounded like a man or a woman. At this point, I'm shitting myself because it just sounded incredibly creepy like something directly from a horror film. I hadn't left my tent at this point, and the humming hadn't gotten any louder. It just stayed a distant background noise. I didn't know what to do, but knew I couldn't just stay there forever, so I mustered up the courage to open my tent as slowly and quietly as I could to see if I could see anything or tell where the noise was coming from. Within five seconds of my poking my head out of the tent, the humming stopped. It didn't fade away or anything, it just stopped dead, as if someone had pressed pause on a recording. I'm still very on edge at this point, but at the time, I assumed that's just what it is. Someone playing a prank on solo campers with an audio recording. I literally couldn't think of any other explanation. 
Based on that assumption, I shouted something like, You're not funny. Fuck off. That made me feel a little bit better because it felt like I'd addressed the issue. I don't know, but for whatever reason, it helped my nerves a bit at the time. I let that hang in the air for like 10 more seconds whilst my head is still poking out of the tent. And it stays quiet. I'm kind of satisfied by this point, so I begin moving back in. As I'm reaching for the tent zimper, though, the humming starts again. Same tune, but much louder. Much closer. And from the completely opposite direction. My heart completely sinks because there is no way someone could have moved from the first source of the noise to the second without me hearing or seeing something. Literally impossible. It was perfectly quiet in the woods, not even any breeze against the trees. And yeah, it was dark, and I could still see a short distance thanks to the moonlight. In the back of my mind, though, my subconscious is clearly working overtime trying to rationalize this, and I guess it must have assumed that there were plenty pranksters out there with multiple audio recordings. I can't exactly remember what my thought process was at this point, because it's truthfully all a blur. But, for one reason or another, I stormed angrily out of the tent towards the now quite loud sound. It sounded as if the person humming was within like 10 feet of the tent. I got up out of the tent, turned towards the noise, ready to scream at the perpetrator or even attack if necessary. That's when I see this humanoid figure silhouetted against the tree line, maybe 15 feet away from me. My best description of it is this. It was a large, thin figure that was shaped like a human, but way too tall and proportioned all wrong. It was huge, I would guess over seven feet. Its limbs were unnaturally long, like it had been stretched out in all directions. Its head appeared very small and rounded. I think the figure was gray in color, but I can't be 100% sure because of the poor visibility. I couldn't make out much of its face at all. It seemed just to be shrouded in shadow. I definitely didn't notice any features like eyes, mouth, or nose. It was standing quite still, facing directly towards me. I say quite still because there was some movement. In the same way that a person or animal would sway back and forth or make some minor body movements, etc. If they were standing up, this was a real living thing. I know that for a fact, not an illusion, not a prop or prank. This thing was standing right in front of me and was aware of my presence. I'm literally paralyzed by fear at this point. I have never felt anything like it before or since. Just a primal terror which has left me cold, shaking, just standing there quite literally unable to move. I distinctly remember thinking that I need to get away but I could not physically move my body. It was the most terrified I had ever been. As I first laid eyes on this creature, the humming stopped, and immediately it started humming again, but not a song. It started softly singing my name, and what sounded like my voice. That sounds fucking ridiculous, I know, but I swear that's how I remember it. Even though it was singing in my voice, though, it didn't sound right. The syllables were just off, as though a non-human had heard speech once and was trying to mimic it for the first time, very poorly. I haven't described that well, but I don't think I know the words to do so. This can't have gone on for more than about ten seconds, but it felt like forever. Me standing there, this creature standing, motionless, singing my name. At some point, though, every cell in my body just switched and I managed to turn and run as fast as I ever have in the opposite direction. 
for maybe two minutes, I was literally sprinting through the woods in just my socks and PJs, with absolutely no other thought in my mind other than putting distance between myself and that thing. I had no idea which direction I was going or how i make it back to my tent. When I eventually stopped, I just leaned against the tree, panting for ages. The forest was still completely quiet. I must have stayed by that tree for about two hours, waiting for my heart rate to settle, trying to calm down and decide what to do. I didn't want to go back to my tent. I was quite happy to leave all of my stuff there, but I needed my phone and car keys to get home. I was several miles away from anywhere. I eventually made my way back slowly. It wasn't too hard to navigate back to my tent in those woods because the tree distribution wasn't very dense. I also hadn't gone as far as I first feared. Once back in my tent, I grabbed just my phone and keys and went back to my car as fast as I was comfortable. Spent the rest of the night sitting in the back seat on my phone, shaking. Didn't even try to get any sleep. Once the sun was up, I managed to go back and pack my stuff up and left as quickly as I could. After that, I took a two plus year break from solo camping, something I normally do every three to four months. So that's my experience. Make out of it what you will. That has stayed with me ever since, and I know it always will. I don't know what it was in the woods with me that night, but it has scarred me for life and transformed the way I think about supernatural experiences, etc. If anyone has encountered anything similar to what I described, I'd be interested in hearing. Thank you for listening to my story. I apologize for the length. This happened a while ago, but it really stuck with me, so I wanted to share it. I was at a friend's house for a weekend with a bunch of people, and we all went for a walk. She lives right at the edge of the countryside where there's fields and woods and whatnot. So we went down this forest path. Me and this other guy started exploring a bit deeper into the trees, and we'd gone quite far downhill into a thicker trees. But then there was this clearing. There was a big log lying on the ground, and resting on it was a skinned deer. No bones or anything. Just the skin and its head and antlers. The head was on the log, eyes missing, and the skin was just sort of draped down the front. Beside it was a crucifix, made out of planks, not just sticks, and tied up with bale string. Me and this guy freaked out, and I called out to our other friends to come see it. But he told me not to show them because they'd find it too disturbing. He then shook it off and started climbing back up, but I just stared at it for ages. So long, he waited for me and told me to walk away from it. There was also string attached to the crucifix that ran further into the woods, but following it wouldn't be very normal of me, so I just went back. I still can't comprehend what it was. Some kind of pagan ritual? some kind of prank. Not many people walk this forest path besides locals walking their dogs and we'd come far off the path too. My friend that lived there said people didn't hunt in these woods, but I didn't want to push it with questions since I'd been told not to tell her. I understand I wouldn't want to know that there was something like that in the woods behind my house, but I find that the lack of answers has me thinking about it more and more. I think if it wasn't still alive today, I'd believe it was the beginning of a horror movie, where all my friends and I are killed off one by one by a forest witch. It was the perfect setup, friends hanging out at a country house for a weekend, 
two idiots go deep into the woods and find something disturbing. Death ensues. I still feel it was some kind of bad omen. Unless I really don't know anything about hunting, and this is regular practice for people who want deer in the woods. Can anyone offer me some insight on this? Was this a sick joke? A deeper meaning? Or is this regular hunting set up? What if it's a curse? What if seeing this cursed me and posting this now, pressing send, will activate the curse? I guess I will just have to wait and see what happens. This is my getting lost in the woods story. I feel like I see so many of these, and they are also so relatable. I've been wanting to share my story to you all since it happened, so here it is. Keep in mind, this is a long one. This happened about two years ago. Me and my fiancé and best friend decided to go to this popular hiking trail near us. The trail leads to a giant rock that hangs off a cliff. It's a beautiful look over the city I live in. It's a far walk through the woods. You're on the same trail going straight for most of the hike. The trail eventually makes a sharp turn, gets thinner, and gets very steep. You really have to hike up this part, and then you reach an open field. You can see the rock above you. You have to climb up one more path that leads you to this rock. Even though the hike is long, the path is very easy and it's hard to mess up, considering this is the only path in that area of the woods that I found at least. I've done it multiple times at this point, even hiked down well after midnight, after watching fireworks on the 4th of July. Anyways, the three of us decided since we were walking close to the road that leads you to the trail, we were going to go visit. It was about 7 p.m., so it started to get dark pretty fast. We didn't even make it off the first part of the trail I already mentioned. It goes straight for about an hour, unless you get to the sharp turn. We didn't even make it to that. We decided since it was getting dark, we should turn around. We all had our flashlights on and everything was normal. We never set foot off the path. The path is pretty much dark engulfed by the trees and there is this one spot where the tree opens up you can see the entire downtown area of my city and it feels pretty high up because this trail is basically in the middle of the hillside surrounding the entire town if you have ever been to pennsylvania you would get it we got to the spot where the clearing is where you can see downtown but it looked flip-flopped. I don't even really know how to explain it. It looked like the town was flipped, like how you can, like, flip an image on your phone. Like someone took the whole town and flipped it the other way, if you get what I'm saying. It was late and dark, and we were tired of walking, so I just don't think we really took it seriously when we walked past. I still felt the weird feeling though, and I felt like everything was backwards all of a sudden. There's the only way I can really describe it, is backwards. And we all said the same thing to each other. It was my fiancé who said something first, which is just weird, because usually he'd be the last to say anything in a situation like that. All he said was that he feels backwards. My best friend freaked out because she gets anxiety like that and said she felt the same way. I mentioned the clearing looked weird and they all agreed with me. They thought the same thing but thought they were really being silly. At this point, we should be close to the exit but it felt like we were going in circles. The path started breaking like the path wasn't even the same we've been walking on. So we turned back around towards the rock to try and figure out where we were. We came back to the clearing and it still looked weird. So we took pics. 
I do have them still if anyone cares to see them, but you wouldn't be able to make out that it looks flip-flopped unless you live in the same town. We knew we were at the clearing, though, because it's the only part where the wood's clear, and we know that we were on the right path, as we've never gone off of it. We decided to turn back around towards the exit, but it didn't bring us to the exit. It also didn't bring us to the path that looked wrong and started to break. It was a whole new part of the woods we'd never seen before. There was a door in the ground. It looked like a door to a mine, maybe. We tried to do research, but there's no evidence of a mine being there. But there is multiple mines in my city, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's just odd and wasn't on record. Beside the door was about five or six white chairs with what seemed to be white sheets laying on the ground around them. Like little pieces of white cloth. Not very big, just pieces. There was also beer bottles. The chairs were in a circle formation, but there was no fire pit in the middle or anything. Just the circle of chairs. Looking back, it could have been a little campsite someone made, but was it scary as fuck at night when you're lost? It really freaked us out, and every time we walked away, it seemed we just made our way back to the chairs and the door. Obviously, we start trying to call and text people we know for help. Even called my parents, but no one answered. It was late, so I guess that makes sense. We are so lost and getting really scared. We are going to have to sleep here, I'm thinking. Eventually, after walking what seemed to be in circles, we just walked out. Like, so fast, the exit was right there. We just walked on the path for a minute and was out like that. Almost immediately after we leave, I get texts back from people I was trying to get help from. And one more creepy thing, just to put the icing on the cake. There was like 1,032 pictures taken on my fiancé's phone at 10.32 p.m. Like a burst. If you have an iPhone, they have these things called bursts where you can take a lot of pictures quickly. It was so weird. The pics were all just white. It's also weird how his phone took pics while he had his flash on at the same time. The pics were taken during the time we were lost. We didn't go back for about a year until me and my fiancé decided to go back and try and find the path we made it onto. Just for peace of mind, we couldn't find it. We couldn't find the door either. We couldn't find anything weird except a giant meat grinder. I hate the woods so much. Freaks me out thinking about any woods or forest of any time. That's just one of the worst experiences for me, but I've had a few, honestly. I just hope people don't think I'm bullshitting them. It sounds crazy to me, so I can imagine someone thinking I'm lying, but... I'm really just looking for a possible explanation. It's one of the things that bother me to this day, and my fiancé doesn't like talking about it, because there is just no explanation as to what happened. Me and my best friend still talk about it, but it goes nowhere, because we have thought of every single possible explanation we can think of. So, any similar experiences or theories shared by you would be great. So, my ex-father-in-law, let's call him Pedro, grew up working ranches. He told me that this happened to him back in the 80s. Somewhere down in Frio County, along Highway 57, the road to Eagle Pass. He took a job with a ranch owner. He was given a mobile home to stay, and his family was welcome to stay also. The ranch owner, Ferguson, I think is what they called him, had built himself a home several miles away. On the same property, 
for the ranch hand, a site-built home was partially started but never completed. It was three sides of a cinder block home and a partial roof. That is why the mobile home was there. This land is about a hundred miles from the U.S. and Mexico border. There's always been a lot of illegal immigrants crossing this land. One late afternoon, there was several illegals crossing the ranch property when Pedro sees them and yells at them, asking what they are doing crossing. They all stop and say, Sir, we want no trouble. We're trying to get north for work and are looking for a place to stay the night. Pedro says, look at that home there. You all can camp there tonight, but you need to be gone by early morning because the owner will be up and doing his rounds. It should be enough cover for the night. If he sees you, I'll act like I don't know you. They agreed and set up camp in the non-completed house, so Pedro couldn't sleep well knowing he might get in trouble. He woke up extra early to wake the illegals up to tell them they needed to get along. But none of them were in the house. He looked around and found that they had all moved their camp about 50 feet from the mobile home. He woke them and asked, why did they move? One of them started to say, No, sir. We meant no trouble, but nobody can stay there in that area. We all heard voices screaming for help. And it was bad. They left soon after, and nobody talked about this again. Until years later. Both Pedro and Ferguson had gotten older, but now they were pretty close, and set out one night on the ranch drinking beer. Pedro tells him, You know, one night these illegals came through and asked to stay the night. I told them yeah, and to stay in the old house there. But they didn't. Pedro told Ferguson the whole story. Ferguson sat there a while. He finally said, You know, after all these years, I never told you. When I was young, I saw my grandfather work this ranch, and a handful of times, I saw him catch some illegals himself. He killed them and buried them right there. He started to build the house over their bodies, but not even the contractors could finish it. They heard the same thing. And that, dear listeners, brings a close to these true backwoods creepy stories. I'd like to take a moment and give a shout out to the elite members of Back to Ashes. Tammy Slayton, Luz Crispin, Colt Stonewolf, Denise Sess, Samantha Place, Stephanie McLaren, Corpse Lover, Norma D.W., Cindy Cleveland, and Patty's Niece. Thank you all so much for your continued support for Back to Ashes. If you are sleeping, I hope Slumberland is treating you comfortably. If you're awake, I hope you've enjoyed this collection. Until next time, please take care of yourselves. I'll be reading to you soon. Have yourself a good morning, a good afternoon, or a good night. Peace, love, and light to you all.